Automated testing in a CI-CD pipeline is a great way to catch regression bugs early. Let me show you how to run Selenium Java tests in a Bitbucket pipeline. Regular automated testing is how we lay the smack down on regression bugs. For our test environment, we're going to use a straightforward Java Maven project that you can find over on GitHub. It contains just a simple test that goes to the Sauce demo website, logs in and checks the title of the logged in page. First things first, we need to import the repository to Bitbucket. I'm going to show you the ropes with Maven, but don't worry, we'll also touch on how you'd get this done with Gradle, Python, and even NPM. And boom, here it is, same repo now living in Bitbucket. Now let's go straight to defining the pipeline. You can do this from the pipelines menu. But since I've been creating and deleting pipelines so often, Bitbucket assumes I already have one. No problem, I can do the same from the deployments menu. A good way to start is by choosing a template. I'll go with the Maven template. This one looks pretty nice. It includes a style checking pipe and a security scan. Well, technically it just scans for secrets, but still it looks cool. I'm curious to see what it finds. First off, we gotta pick the Docker image we want to use. It's usually best to go with the Docker image that matches your build tool. So if you're building with Maven, go for Maven latest. That way you skip having to install Java and Maven yourself. Installation slows down your pipeline. Now if you're team Gradle, then you'd grab the Gradle latest image and tweak the build command to something like Gradle clean test. Or if Python's your jam, you'd pick Python latest and throw in your PyTest command to run your tests. And for all you NPM fans, you'd snag the node latest image. So the basic rule is to use the image of your build tool. But for this tutorial, I'm going to go against that advice and use Alpine Linux instead. That way, you can see how to set things up with a more generic Linux image, including installations. First, we need to upgrade Alpine using its package manager, APK. Then we're going to install OpenJDK 21, and finally Maven. That's all we need. Since we're in the deployments menu, Bitbucket asks us to add a deployment step. No problem, let's do that. Everything's looking pretty good, so let's hit that commit button and fire this thing up. Now, I know this run is going to fail, but I want to show you what happens so you understand all the necessary steps when migrating tests to the cloud. Okay, deploy to test is chugging along in parallel with build and test. Looks like my step indentation might be a bit off. Most dev teams prefer to deploy after the tests, not at the same time. And there we have it, the reason for the fail, driver executable does not exist. This test setup is using a local Chrome driver, which is not ideal for a CI CD pipeline. You'd have to push the driver to your repository and update it manually. And if you're running cross browser tests, you'd have to update multiple drivers, which is a hassle. So when we get to the test script writing, I'll show you a better way. Let's peek at what the security scan dug up. No secrets found, you are good at keeping secrets. Thanks, I do appreciate a little compliment now and then. Alright, time to fix this. Next up, I'll clone the repo to my local machine so I can make a few changes and verify they work before pushing them to the cloud. Debugging is always easier locally. Here's the test, it's pretty easy. I'm sure you'll understand if you just have a look. First, we need to do some imports. 
we will import Remote Web Driver and Chrome Options classes. Remote Driver will use a browser in a Docker container, so the pipeline will update the browser before every run, and we don't have to do a thing and still the browser is always up to date. While we're at it, let's add Firefox options and Edge options too, so we can easily run cross-browser tests later. I'll comment out the lines that are setting up the local driver. Gonna wrap this in a try-catch block, and then instantiate the remote driver. All it needs is the URL of the standalone browser and the browser options. That's all we need for the test. Now, let's Google the correct Docker image, and there we'll get the docker run command. and we hit an error. Again, I'm showing you this error because it's good to understand these things. No matching manifest for Linux ARM. This is popping up because Selenium builds their images on Ubuntu. I'm on a Mac with an ARM processor, and while it can run Linux AMD images, I gotta tell it to specifically look for the Linux AMD platform. If you have a Windows computer, some of them will run Linux images, and some don't. It depends on the virtualization support of your processor. With the docker ps command, I can double check that the container is actually running. Looks like it is, so we should be good to run our selenium test. And we have a win. If you're ever curious to see what the browser's doing, especially if you're debugging, you can just hop over to localhost port 7900 and watch the action unfold. The password for the VNC connection is secret, not that secretive in my opinion. And there's the browser running through our test steps. Now let's try also to make the test fail. When I'm prototyping a new pipeline, I usually leave the test script to a failing state. It's more informative to see how the pipeline fails. And there's the error, wrong labs. We've successfully got our test running with a remote driver locally. Now we're all set to move this test up to the cloud. We need to make a few adjustments to our pipeline. First, define the services the test run needs. We need the standalone Chrome image running as a service. You can use the latest tag, or if you need to test a beta version, use beta. To test a specific browser version, just specify the version number as the tag. I'm leaving the tag empty here, and that grabs the latest version. Then, in our pipeline step, we need to tell it which services this step is going to use. And that's all the changes we need to make to our pipeline. So let's commit and push this to the remote repository. Git push asks for a password. If you're new to using Bitbucket, I'll show you what to do here. Navigate to bitbucket.org and then go to the repository settings and then access tokens. Click on create repository access token. Give your token a name and for permissions we only need read and write. If we hadn't cloned the repo yet, we could just copy this line of code they give us. But since we already cloned it, I'll show you another way. Just copy the repository URL with token. Then type git remote set URL origin and paste the URL you copied. Now we can push the changes.
After the push, the pipeline kicked off automatically. And once again, deployment started right away again, not after the tests. Seriously, I think I'm having a senior moment here. The good news is our test failed on the assertion we intentionally set to fail. So the pipeline is working as expected. Now let's go fix that deployment order issue. And while we're at it, let's add artifacts to the pipeline. That way we can actually see our test reports. The folder we need to add as an artifact, we can find it in the run log. It's target surefire reports. Double asterisk will grab all the files in that folder. Next, let's fix the deployment step. I need to move it out of the parallel section and under default. That's done. Now let's add cross-browser support. I'm gonna use an environment variable for this. Before running the test, I'll set a test browser variable to tell the test which browser options it should use. Then, I'll use a switch case in the code to set the correct browser options based on that variable. Next up, in the pipeline we need to set this variable. I'm also going to toss in some common Maven parameters that help clean up the logging in a pipeline, batch mode and no transfer progress. Then we duplicate the test Chrome step to have Firefox and Edge tests. In the service definitions, I have to add my Firefox and my Edge services too. If my typing is too fast, feel free to pause the video and take a closer look. Before this run, I'm also going to bump up the Selenium and TestNG versions to the latest in our POM file. Always good to keep those versions current. The test file in the editor is showing red. Let's see what's up. Classic, I missed a curly brace. I'll also add a line to print out the browser and the logs, so we can be sure we are actually using the correct browser. Everything looks good, we're ready to push the code to the cloud, and we can admire how beautifully it runs. And look at that, deployment actually is waiting for the tests to finish first. All three tests failed, let's just quickly check if it's hitting that assertion we set to fail. All three worked fine, let's double check what browser it printed out in the logs. All good, now let's check the artifacts by downloading the test report.
that wraps this tutorial. I hope you liked it, and if you did, share it with your colleagues. See you in the next video.